Hi, my name is Father Mike. <laughs> That's not. It's hard. It's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to say what my name is. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. You might know this, but the Eucharistic revival that was declared by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops um, has basically just begun. There's an, a series of a uh, number of years leading up to a, an actual revival that's going to happen in the in the United States in local parishes in each diocese that's centered around the Eucharist, and not just around the Eucharist, around a, really. The fact that the Eucharist has the capacity, has the capability, has, has the power to revive the hearts of every human being, not just Catholics who are in the pews, but every human being. The Eucharist has the capability of doing this. In fact, I want to talk about this because that's what it's done in my life. It's without a doubt that um, the Eucharist has been the number one, I want to say, thing uh, in my entire life. I was raised Catholic, but I didn't really care about the Catholic Church. Um, I had to go to Mass every Sunday. Hated going to Mass every Sunday. I uh, went to Mass at Catholic school, elementary school. Hated going to Mass at Catholic elementary school. Everything changed for me. Everything changed for me. When um, I had a conversion moment, I had an encounter of sin in my life, went to confession. Um, when I was 15 years old, I rode my bike over to the, bike over to the priest's house. It's a whole story about that. Um, but after that, I was reading a book that was lying around in my parents' house. And it had a little, every chapter was divided up into different articles of the faith. And I remember coming upon the chapter about the Eucharist and my mind was blown. My life was changed forever. I remember just thinking, oh my gosh, this is real. That will be what we've been doing at mass. When the priest says, this is my body, this is my blood, that that bread actually becomes the body of Jesus. That the blood, the wine actually becomes the blood of Jesus Christ himself. It changed everything because it, it went from being a symbol to being real. In fact, I know there's so many people. In fact, I think it's only like 27% maybe of Catholics who go to mass believe that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist, which is the most tragic statistic I think I've ever heard in my entire life. Because of what happened to me when I encountered the Lord Jesus in the Eucharist, the truth of this teaching, um, I remember uh, the first time I ever got a chance to talk in a church. I was a seminarian, and uh, they said, "What do you want to talk about?" And I said, "The Eucharist." First time I ever spoke when I was, after I was ordained a deacon was on the Eucharist. First thing I ever got to say as as, a, as I was ordained a priest was on the Eucharist. And and God willing, the last thing I ever say this side of heaven is on the Eucharist. Because Jesus is truly present. I remember the first time I, um, I realized that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it all has Jesus saying very, very clearly, this is my body, this is my blood. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, he also in recounts that story of the Last Supper of Jesus saying, this is my body, this is my blood. But it's in John's Gospel, chapter 6, where Jesus explains, makes really clear what he meant, what he, or I guess what he was going to mean, when at the Last Supper he was going to say, this is my body, this is my blood. What happens in the beginning of John, beginning of John chapter 6, you might know the story, is that thousands of people came to see Jesus, to hear him preach. They weren't necessarily believers. In fact, there were kind of three groups of people. There were the crowds, those people who just came out to see the entertaining wonder worker, the teacher. There were the disciples, those are the people who left their family, their friends, their homes, their jobs, they left everything to follow Jesus. And then there's the 12, right? The original boy band, those 12 apostles. As Jesus um, feeds 5,000 people, that night he goes and he walks across water and meets them on the other side. And, and those 5,000 people, they're looking for more food and so they go looking for Jesus. And he sees them coming and he says something along the lines of, you're not here because you believe in me, you're here because you want more food. And they say basically, yeah, give us more food. He says, I will give you food if you eat it, You'll live forever. Never, never be hungry again. And they say, they say, for sir, give us this food always. And this is John chapter 6. He says, he says this, he says, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. That's uh, John chapter 6, verse 35. So they're like, okay, well, what do you mean by that? The Jews, in fact, verse 41 says, the Jews murmured about him because he said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. And they say, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? So Jesus makes it incredibly clear. In verse 51, he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And here's where he makes it absolutely clear. He says, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. He's, up to this point, Jesus has talked about, yeah, come to me, believe in me. And at this point, he's saying, okay, that's going to look really different. It's not just believing that I'm the bread from heaven, not just believing that I came from God. It's 
eat my flesh, drink my blood. Now, if you think that the people listening to him, they, they were like, nah, Jesus is speaking figuratively. Because in other places in the Gospels, Jesus does speak figuratively. He says things like, I'm the gate. He says, I'm the good shepherd. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. At no, at no point in those moments did anyone say, Jesus, you're not a bush. You're, like, you're not a shepherd, you're a carpenter, buddy. We know about this. Never ever did they mistake when he's speaking figuratively from when he's speaking literally. And in this moment, they do not respond as if they think he's speaking figuratively. In fact, it goes on to say, it says, the Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So question, pop quiz, does it sound to you like they think he's speaking literally or figuratively? It sounds like they think he's speaking literally. Now, this is Jesus' perfect opportunity. If he's not speaking literally about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, he could completely clarify that. Like, whoa, whoa, you guys, just settle down. That's not what I meant. What does he do? The very next verse has Jesus doubling down, actually quadrupling down plus one, and saying, he says, Jesus then said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. Now, amen, amen, I say to you, or very truly, verily unto thee I say, or truly, truly, I say to you, basically means what I'm saying after this is a solemn oath. Whenever Jesus says, amen, amen, in so many ways you could say, what he's saying is, this next thing I stake my life on. And Jesus says, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. It goes on to say, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him on the last day. First, <laughs> the next, th third time, verse 53, For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. For whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. And the fifth time he says, Just as the Father, living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. In response to them, thinking that he's speaking literally, Jesus says, you don't even know the half of it. Because we, we miss this in the English translation. But in the original Greek translation, that word to eat changes every time. It begins with like if a Greek word that would mean like if you, if you consume me, receive me. And then it goes to if you consume me, then dine on me. The last time Jesus uses that word to eat, it's actually the word to gnaw. Jesus is making it very, very clear that he's not speaking figuratively, he's speaking literally. And that the Eucharist we have in our masses, the Eucharist we have in every single Catholic church throughout the world for the last 2,000 years is not a symbol of Jesus. It truly is Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. This teaching, this teaching changed my life. This teaching is worth living for. This teaching is worth dying for. This teaching is worth giving up hockey tournaments to make sure that you get to Mass every single Sunday. This teaching has the ability and the capacity to change your life as well. Because the heart of this teaching is this. It's the heart of Christianity. Think about what Christianity is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son. And what does his beloved son do? For the beloved son so loved the world that he gave his very self as food. He gave his very self as Emmanuel, God with us. He has given his very self and he continues to give his very self so that you're never alone. So you never walk through this world malnourished. You never walk through this world in isolation or alienation. But every step you take, is with Emmanuel, God with us. Every step you take is with Jesus, the bread of life. Every step you take is with the God who's given everything, everything to be close to you. That's the heart of the Eucharist. And that's the heart of Christianity. From all of us here to such presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.